Hey everyone, you're listening to the Active Turnkey Podcast, a podcast designed for hands-off passive real estate rental investors. In the Active Turnkey Podcast, you'll hear Tom Olson and Jared Stoltmeister discuss all things turnkey rentals with other turnkey providers, service providers, and rental investors. Our goal is to help you reach your financial freedom and whatever comes after that. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Active Turkey Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Stoltmeister, and I have with us, as usual, the Tom Olson. And we both got the memos today Yeah, to wear blue shirts. Yeah, I was going to say, we're color-coordinated. Um, kind of goes along with the Olson Group thing. Yeah, our, and our church people would, when they sing in church, they oh. would wear... They would wear like where you're going on suits with that. and ties and stuff, and so people would <laughs> matchy us. matchy. Yeah, they would ask us if we're singing in church if we were at church today. Matchy matchy. Uh, we need the, the, the top hats, maybe. Do the I acapella group, me. an acapella group or something. <clears throat> I always have a top hat in my car. Should you never know. should we try, Jared? <gasps> no. Okay, we're not going to do that, folks. For you, um, it's a different podcast, but I, I do it. My daughters last night were singing their lungs out. It was quite funny. Hmm. Um, Doing homework and singing Disney songs. It was. Oh, I couldn't do that. I, I thought about like going down and videotaping them. Oh yeah, no. I'm you know I'm notorious for that, Jared. Oh yeah. Um, and using it later. It's ammunition, man. At any given time. That is but not, hey, we're here we not to leverage. talk about that. We're going to talk about Active <laughs> Turkey, the best way to buy rentals, right, baby? That's right. Correct. And uh, we're going into Tom. a. We are going into a. <laughs> we're going into a market that I kind of believe is going to be really good. Um, for being able to pick up properties. Hold that on, hold on. Be... You're saying that we're going into a good market. I think so, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Right. I so, like that. I like that. Um, it's the optimist in me, but it's also the investor in me. I've been okay. investing in real estate for 25 you. years or so. <laughs> I bought my first rental about 25 years ago wow. this year. Yeah. Um, it's a long time ago. My kids would say I'm old, <laughs> right? Are, are your kids telling you that you're old yet? Uh, I am not 40 yet. You're Tom. middle-aged? I'm still in my 30s. <laughs> I will be 40 tomorrow. Okay. Tomorrow, tomorrow Jared turns 40. I am Da-da. in my 30s. Happy birthday to you. That's what I was hoping for. There we go. That's Jared just wanted a happy for. birthday. I did. Boom. He got it. So everybody out today, there, if you're watching, make sure everybody that's watching on YouTube, Facebook, anywhere where you can comment, make sure you wish Jared Stoutmeister a happy 4-0. He is, this is, this, I'm going to give you this advice, Jared, that one of my investors gave me. The mm-hmm. night before. I was there for You that were place. there, Jared. And he said, yeah. 40 is like the pinnacle. It is the peak. And mm-hmm. sometime tomorrow morning, you will hit that peak. And mm-hmm. then you will start going down slowly mm-hmm. from that. If you're watching me, you're seeing that my hand's going down slowly. Yeah. It's a slow drip, Jared. Yeah. I'm going to go down fast, man. I'm going to go. I ain't going to gain <laughs> Jared's speed. like, I'm going to make it happen. Yep. It's not going to be it's a slow. A slow climb and a fast <laughs> descent. I, somehow we got off topic <laughs> yeah. several times today. <clears throat> um, we're good at that. That's right. um, and, but it's okay because our fans like it. Oh, they love we have, it. We have listened to our fans. That's and they the most said, feedback we get. We want more <laughs> Tom and Jared entertaining us. We don't really care too much about all it's, the information they're giving us. That's what we want to. We want that's more true. entertainment. Uh, maybe one of these Active Turnkey podcasts, we should show some, maybe we should tease them with like some of our office episodes that we've done around here in the office. We have a blooper reel. And but... give them like a little bits at a time of their, our, and then maybe over 10 podcasts, they mm-hmm. can see the whole office episode that we did. I feel like that we did have a, a blooper reel that I felt was a little, a little... Uh... It was a little slanted. It was. I, I, I agree, Jerry. <laughs> I'm just on. saying. I agree. It, it was an agenda. It there. really made Jared someone look bad. Was, and someone was mooching, <laughs> kissing up to Tom and in, in, in kind, or the you know, or maybe I just maybe I just don't have any bloopers. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. Absolutely. I think this whole entire episode is a blooper reel, Jared. Absolutely. So we, we are going to talk today. A hard segue. Here. Yes. We're is... talking today about what's going on in real estate. What it? What is going on in real estate, what Jared? What is going on? I'll tell you. Uh, it's different. I'm, it's different, but I'm, I'm We're investing. in a different market than we were in a year ago. Yes. And two years ago. It might be close to what it was in 2019. I can see that. But I think sometimes it's hard for yeah. us to feel what was it like two years ago yeah. Yeah. and try to get back to that like kind of equilibrium mm-hmm. yeah. when it comes to houses. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had a couple conversations on Facebook the last couple of days about this kind of topic. Um, I also have been doing a free call for my audience or for my network every month. 
um, called the Real Estate Free For All Calls. And uh, shameless plug there for you guys can go to Good Success and find out more about those free calls that you want to get on. for that? Um, GoodSuccess.com. Good and success. they are, uh, they're normally on Saturday. Sometimes I do them on Fridays because I have some of my friends that won't do Saturday calls. So this morning, I actually did a call this morning to Friday. <laughs> We're recording this on a Friday. Uh, but uh, I, had, I had some great guests on. Um, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our call. So our call today was really this question: well, What is what is going on in real estate? And I, ha- I've the last two months, I've I've been doing these roundtable calls. So I've had about mm-hmm. ten people give me their opinion mm-hmm. and what they see in different segments. I had I've had lenders, I've had people do short term rentals, I've had people that own rentals, um, mobile homes on land, people that do property management and data and. Um, uh, Eddie Wilson, who owns American Association of Private Lenders and Think Realty, from from a little bit you know higher um, perspective, um, and so it, it, it's been interesting to get different people's mm-hmm. perspective. Yeah. But Jerry, you you see what what's <clears throat> happening even with our own properties and and even our own acquisitions mm-hmm. that we're being able to acquire. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I mean, I'm taking this as an opportunity. Absolutely. And you know, especially for our our turnkey audience like our turnkey buyers are being able to get deals now Mm -hmm. um and we're being able to offer them because we know when the market gets overheated i don't want to sell those houses to those to our buyers because i feel like i feel we have to be a good steward Mm -hmm. (laughs) and um we we want to be able to sell houses to people that we know are going to be good investments and long-term um type of strategies and that's why we created the active turnkey process to Mm -hmm. begin with Mm -hmm. is because we felt like even though it was a little harder I think the active turnkey process is harder for our investors. Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a little bit more effort. We still feel like it is the best way to buy rentals. Yep. That's our yep. tagline for the yep. for the uh, podcast here is active turnkey, the best way to buy rentals. Because we really do believe if if we were doing it, this is how we would do it. Jared, you've done this, right? Yep, doing it right now. I mean, I've done mm-hmm. this. Um, many people I know have done this whole strategy of active turnkey. Um, but... What's going on? And I think just kind of let's step it out mm-hmm. of just what we do from day to day yeah. and just think about it. You know, like some investors might think this might not be a great time to invest. Mm-hmm. Other people like myself and like you are looking at this as an opportunity. Hey, mm-hmm. we haven't been able to get the deals that we used to be able to get. And now we can actually make these things happen. And I think for the next two years, we might see great blue skies on and, and great blue waters on acquiring because... You know, a lot of the newbies have kind of exited yep. this market. Yep. A lot of people that, that we knew were overbuying and overpaying for a while have exited. And, and that had, and that drove up prices. Mm-hmm. And now we're kind of seeing a little bit more, you know, normal days on market. Price reductions are happening because people thought for two years that, like, the house needed to sell in a weekend, yeah. right, with mm-hmm. 16 offers and many over list price. And that's yep. just really not happening. Yep. Highest and best. Um, a lot <laughs> of price reduction. I mean, we, we I'm seeing in one of the markets that we are in, 39% of houses are actually seeing price reductions. Wow. Now, part of that might be because people are a little True. over exuberant. Mm-hmm. They're pricing houses. They're continuing to price higher than mm-hmm. what the comps say because mm-hmm. that's what we've done for the last yep. two years. Yep. Um, so maybe some of it's that, and some of it might just be people are getting a little bit anxious. Mm-hmm. Um, there's definitely a lot of anx- anxiety with the uh, clickbait and the uh, media that's trying to sure. make everybody scared um, about that. But so that's why I figured, hey, let's let's talk about it. Let, let's <clears throat> let's get into some specific parts of this of real estate and maybe kind of look at things from a different perspective. So so Jared, again, let, let's get back to so so okay. what are you seeing? How 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 are you seeing things change? And then I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that I've heard over the last two calls that I've kind of had with my other um, advisors and people that I talk to mm-hmm. about what they're seeing. No, you you mentioned it first of all. There's less people in the market today, uh, and it's interesting. In Gary, we were the you know, there's a couple guys who are long term investors in Gary who were flipping four years ago, maybe right, but just uh, just barely. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were at one point the only people really, we were the Gary buyer. Mm-hmm. We were the Gary buyer and people knew that. People would kind of give us their castaway leads. Uh, recently, uh, the last couple years, investors have seen that they had to come to Gary, right? They just had to. Uh, and then recently, even more recently, uh, we're seeing them leave again. They're concerned um, for, for myriad different reasons. But uh, right now, we are still the Gary buyer. We're still Gary buyer. Um, and... 
And so uh, I, I find that really interesting. There's, there's less people, and, that, and that's just not Gary. That's everywhere. There's less less people, um, less uh, competition, which has created, like you said, a fair playing field. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, where, again, uh, it's like anything else, a lot of times we'll see a tons of listings, tons of listings. And a lot of these listings are for sale by owner people throwing out their house at like ridiculous prices and they sit for however long and they, they're they never going to sell, even to a newbie mm -hmm. at that price. <laughs> and so it's kind of throwing off numbers a little bit. Um, but that being said, I, I mean, there's less buyers and, and the lower prices. Now, I think there's, that's not to be confused. I had a buyer recently uh, say at say that, hey, since Gary prices are falling, and I said, they're not falling. They're not. They're, they're they're not. Now, I would I think we would say that if you're over 200 flip, then okay, that I can see. But right now, uh, it's uh, everything we are selling is appraising. We've we've gone to, in fact we've gone recently into a, a little uh, subdivision that has not been touched. It has not been touched, and there was just no uh, rehabbed uh, comps, no listings in that area. We put in there. And it appraised above our list price, and we were setting the market. And uh, so I thought that was really interesting. It lists even above that, and we thought it was maybe, maybe not, you know. And and so um, the houses are appraising. So I would say uh, it's perspective. The, the the buy, the A to B, the that price is falling, but it's falling because people, I think, are we're just throwing out numbers, ridiculous so prices. So distressed prices. So, yes, correct. So basically, like you're talking about, and there's always like two or three markets mm -hmm. in any market. There is this like complete retail, mm -hmm. high end uh -huh. Uh -huh. market. And then there's like the lived in dated yeah. market. And then there's a third like distressed mm -hmm. market. So I do believe that the distressed market yeah. is falling mm -hmm. while the retail market is pretty much staying steady. Yeah. Um, especially in that like turnkey price mm -hmm. range where you mm -hmm. want to, when you can buy a turnkey and yep. it will cash flow and you can get a, a 1% or better yep. um, return on that property. So mm -hmm. 1% basically means if I can buy a house for $100,000, it rents for $1,000 a month. If you can get that or better, mm -hmm. like those properties aren't going anywhere. No. <laughs> those prices aren't going anywhere in my opinion and I don't I don't see it happening I am buying like that myself to think that that we are going to kind of sit there and at the same time rents have continued to go up yep. and 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 it, I actually think that the rent increases is probably a lot due to the rent memorandums that the government's had and you suck out a bunch of supply and all of a sudden it forces all these other houses to, to be higher when you mm -hmm. when you don't allow bad tenants to get out good tenants have to pay more because there's less you know prop product available mm -hmm. um, so I actually think it's it's really kind of the government's fault that the rents have gone up but I think rents are like taxes they go up and never come back down mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. have you ever gotten your property tax bill and it went down like I don't shocked. see it yeah. Yeah. happen yeah. now maybe if now the actual we have seen it even in our area a couple of voter approved stuff sure. that might fall off, but I don't really count that as no. my taxes it's going down. Tax. Yeah. But taxes have gone up, mm -hmm. insurance has gone up, and the rents are are gonna stay gonna stay at least at the level where retail says they are today. Mm -hmm. um, which is why we love this. We love where yeah. we're at right now. To to us, this is we're kind of coming into a market where this actually fits our sweet spot again. Yep. Um, the last two years wasn't really our sweet spot. It wasn't really what we like to see because we want to build rental portfolios for our investors. Mm -hmm. um, so we're actually just kind of chomping at the bit. We've got a lot of houses under contract right now. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm looking at trying to ramp up more construction and try to hire more people that can help us in, in the construction part of it because I think it's one of the hardest parts of mm -hmm. the whole process, mm -hmm. um, especially today. Yeah. And um, so that's kind of... That's that, so that that's kind of what uh, what we see here. Um, I I will say there's been a lot of houses that are being listed, so a lot more houses are being listed in today's market. Less houses are selling than are being listed. But let's keep in mind where we were when we started this. You know, mm -hmm. six months ago, you know, our area had less than one month's worth of supply. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, now we have several months worth of, worth of supply, but it's a normal, now it's we're into a normal mm -hmm. market. <clears throat> um, something that really got brought up on one of my calls the, this morning here that I had was 
a lot of this is just perspective. It's not really reality. So a lot of what you know, we think you know, prices might be falling, the, uh, the real estate you know, whole market's gonna crash, it is really just perspective. The numbers don't really show that that's what, how people should be acting, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so when you have somewhere, and I don't, I don't know where the number's at, but it's somewhere between 4 million and 6 million houses that we are, United States, underbuilt. <laughs> if we are still underbuilt by that many houses, eventually, mm -hmm. when people's emotions and people's brains catch up with their emotions and they start thinking to themselves, huh, I still need to find a place to live. I still need to either mm -hmm. rent a place. And investors say, I still have a place. I still need to put my capital somewhere. Mm -hmm. I still want financial freedom somewhere, mm -hmm. somehow. They're going to come back to real estate. Yep. Um, the other thing to take advantage of right now, as far as like maybe you, if you're out there trying to raise private capital, right now is a great time to think about that mm -hmm. because a lot of people are not happy with their returns in the stock market. Um, a lot of the real estate investors are flying high and they think that they're super happy with their investments right now, but people in the stock market are not. And there's trillions of dollars in the stock market. So is this the best time to get out of the stock market? No. Am I telling you, you should do that? No. Mm. But there are, th that doesn't mean that people aren't doing it. Yeah. Um, one of my friends, Wendy Sweet, said this on this morning's call. She said, people are not good with their money. <laughs> it's just a fact. This isn't, sure. not, this isn't something that like is you know, rocket science, people are just historically not good with their money. Um, Eddie Wilson said that since the 1970s, um, housing has kind of shifted from a need to like, I deserve, I deserve this house. Mm -hmm. And eventually that I deserve is going to come back. <laughs> now it might just mean that they might have to buy a little bit less house mm -hmm. and they maybe, maybe, you know, the, their, the interest rate um, obviously, the interest rates are rising, and we do think that we're going to see that to continue for the next, you know, six to nine months. Um, but historically, they're still pretty low, and historically, six percent rates are not anything that are that real estate investors that have been in the business for any period of time should be afraid of. Um, so, I mean, that's something that we're definitely seeing. I think on the other thing that we I'd like like, like to mention, we actually one of our last uh, podcasts, right? We had Jerry Petit Padilla on. And he mentioned that, uh, you know, applications for mortgages are way down. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's kind of funny because one of the biggest complaints that we hear from some of our investors is how long it takes, how yeah. the banks are so hard. It's so mm -hmm. hard to get a little deal done. And for us, like, what are we seeing? Like, we're getting deals days. done in 30 days or less. Yeah. We haven't seen 30 days yeah. or less deals oh, in wow. maybe 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, it's like, that's a, it's like <laughs> a unicorn. It doesn't yeah. happen, yeah. right? Um, and uh, so if you are in the market, you're going to have an easier time, I think, make, getting those deals done um, and making making thing, making headway happen. Um, I don't know if interest rates are going to get back down lower at some point. If you ask my opinion of what I think is going to happen in the next two or three years, I think they'll continue to rise. We probably see high sixes, maybe low sevens. And I think at some point in the end of 2023, 2024, they'll realize what a mess they made and they'll probably have to quantitative ease, put more money back into the markets, <laughs> and also uh, low, lower interest rates again, which may be a good time for people to be able to refinance. I, and I think that might be one of the points of the reason why people are not getting mortgage applications is because all the refinance markets completely dried up. Um, mm -hmm. There's some super smart people um, like Jared here that are still doing burrs. Perfect segue. <laughs> uh, yeah, Tom. So... <laughs> <laughs> right, so Jared, me and Jared talked about this today. Jared is in the middle of doing a burr himself right now. Uh -huh. Buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat. Mm -hmm. And um, he's in the middle of, of refinancing a house that he owns cash or maybe he has private money on it or private whatever money. the case is. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so those people are still there. But you know that those are normally a very small minority yeah. of the market. Uh, so, you know, it's and it's always – it's funny um, – uh, a person on the call who, who's who's really highly connected with like the most the biggest hedge funds uh, in in the country for real estate said it was something like and I, I didn't write the data I wish I would have wrote the actual thing down but it was like they were gonna buy one point I think combined between five or six hedge funds they were gonna buy like 1.8 billion dollars worth of real estate between now and the end of 2023 yeah. I mean and it's like do I want to be that one scared person that's like on the fringe, that's listening to all my friends, that's watching the media? Or do I want to be the person that is like 
following the smart money and following because yeah. the smart money always makes all the money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of mm -hmm. like in 2008. I remember being on the dumb side of this. That's yeah. and that's the yeah. thing. In 2008, 2009. We thought we were so smart because all these hedge funds in Indianapolis were buying all these houses that were built in 99 and, mm -hmm. and 2006. And they were buying all these houses for what we thought were overvalue because mm -hmm. that value in today's dollars sure. wasn't quite that value. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Eight years later, those houses had tripled in value. So uh, what I kind of ask is like, who was the dumb person? Who was the smart person in that scenario? I was the dumb person. I'll let you answer that question. Yes, I was a dumb yes. person. Uh, thank you, Jared. That. Jared's so respectful, isn't he? Um, so, again, this is the time I, I think we should get excited as real yeah. estate investors, that we have an opportunity to pick stuff up. Um, and I think sometimes also if you step back out and look at the, the bigger picture, look at the look at the, the hundred, the 20 year picture, look at a hundred year picture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think you'll you'll maybe make a little bit different decisions than if we just consider where we at today versus where were we at in 2021, yeah. where maybe we were paying a little bit more money, but we had a lower interest rate yeah. and we thought that was great. Yeah. Um, and now we could actually pay less with yeah. maybe a little bit higher uh, of high, higher interest rate. So I don't believe that the sky is falling. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, quite quite the the, the uh, contrary. Um, we talked about retail that they deserve. They feel like they deserve it. We talked about re the rental market. The rents are continuing to stay strong. Well, that's gonna that was gonna be what I was gonna. You mentioned perspective, and in two ways that I think that makes a lot of sense. First of all, perspective. Again, we we're going through a deal that I'm going to be presenting at the free for all event. A couple different deals. And when we looked back, the guy bought the house turnkey mm -hmm. four or five years ago, mm -hmm. and the interest rate was in the, sixes, the fives and oh, sixes. sixes. Yes, yep. and 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 uh, and so I mean that was uh, that wasn't he wasn't running away from that deal when he bought it, and since then interest rates have you know you know they went to what half that number, and now they're back up to that same number. But now all investors who came in midway through that think that it's an awful time to buy. Well, that guy did pretty well. <laughs> he made about what ninety thousand dollars run his return total yep. after it was all said yep. and done. Um, he flipped it after holding it for five years. So the perspective would tell you that, like you said, I mean historically six percent is is really good. It's really good. And you know one thing that I that that I'm hearing or I'm seeing is uh, either guys are afraid to buy because of the cash flow, or they're not they're un unwilling to adjust their acquisition strategy based upon cash flow. When we just so I, I just did a, I have a rental property. I, I rented it. It's been rented about a year and a half. At the time in Gary, I, I rented it for nine ninety five, and I was excited about it. That same house today, I put it on the market today, like it's listed today for the first day, at twelve fifty, two hundred fifty five dollars higher than why I listed it a year and a half ago, and I was pumped about it. And so again, as rents go up, uh, sure your cash flow may not be you know, as, as sweet as it was a year ago, but as the prices continue to go up, which they have, that's going to help your cash flow down the road. So I don't, I don't necessarily say you ought to just project cash flows per se, but to understand historically where things are, there's potential there. And it's really ba bad to say no to a good deal just because it's not like $400 cash flow out the gate like you've become accustomed to or what you desire. You know what I'm saying? It's just very different perspectives to look at to where you uh, there's opportunity there for you investors. Yeah. So, um, so to me, like I feel like so where we're at right now, I think the biggest thing to do is to go back to the fundamentals. Like, mm -hmm. what does mm -hmm. a deal look like? What is my buy box? What am I gonna do? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what what we had to do as a company. So, mm -hmm. you know, so, even even as a company, we had to kind of look at this and be like, hey, what do what 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 are we gonna do now? Like, we know that the market has shifted a little bit, and we know that we that there's some changes happening. And we don't want to get stuck. We want to be good stewards of what we're doing. Um, and at the same time, we know we've got a bunch of investors that want to buy the properties that we have. So let's just make it the best possible property we possibly can for them. And that's what we decided to do. As a company, we decided, hey, like we're going to focus on that turnkey buyer. We know that they're there. We know long term it's a good it's a good investment for them, um, and we know we can sell these within hours most of the time mm -hmm. um, of the time that they go out. So we made shifts to the fundamentals. Like we know if it's in our buy box, if it fits certain parameters, mm -hmm. um, then and that's what I encourage everybody to do. I would encourage everybody to figure out what is that for them. Like what is that buy box, yep. and if it fits. 
doesn't really matter what's going on in real estate today. No. It doesn't matter. One mm-hmm. thing that a, a good friend of mine, David Phelps, said and is stuck with me forever is like during a recession or during a downturn, the house itself doesn't know it's going down in value. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. fact, the rents often go up yeah. Yeah. And, or at least stay steady. Um, and the house itself doesn't know. It's not like a stock. A stock, if it goes on in value, you could, you could, you could. It actually really hurts. It takes a while for that thing to come back, mm-hmm. um, and you lose a lot of return that way. You don't lose that return um, as much in 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 real estate. So we are excited to be in real estate right now. Um, I think it's important to have the proper perspective yeah. when it comes to this, and understand we are affordable housing providers. Mm-hmm. That's what we are. Mm-hmm. Um, next week, I'm actually doing a virtual day on the hills where we're going to go and talk to uh, senators and um, House of Representatives people when they are trying to enact certain laws to help them understand you know, how it affects small business owners like ourselves, how it affects the, even the tenants. Um, like I said already on this call, I believe that uh, the rent memorandums actually hurt good owners. I mean, not good owners, good, 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 good renters. Mm-hmm. Like the good renters now are paying more mm-hmm. and, and, and they're, they're kind of being penalized to a certain degree because Bad tenants couldn't have been could not mm-hmm. have been been kicked out, and it, I don't understand why people why the government would give people money, at the same time of not letting their tenants or, or not letting um, property owners evict tenants from not paying. Like mm-hmm. if you're going to give them money, mm-hmm. then let them evict, and then on top of that, let them pay. They were giving <laughs> on top of giving people money, so they would they were gave out thousands and thousands of dollars mm-hmm. to every single family, mm-hmm. you know, two or three checks or whatever. How many people checks people got you know last two years? And then they were paying rent vouchers, giving yep. rent vouchers for six, eight, nine months. Yep. On top of all that, like, why do you need the rent memorandums and not allow you to, you know, not if people weren't using that money properly, it's their own fault. Yep. Um, so, and, and by sucking out all of the inventory that could have been rental inventory during that period of time, it just made supply and demand get way out of whack, um, and really, I think, is 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 influenced inflation like dr- drastically and, and dramatically because I think rent is one of those big numbers when it comes into inflation. Um, so have the proper perspective. Um, don't let this feeling feeling emotion go get, get into this when you keep hearing on the news because this is what they do, right? Um, what I've learned, Jared, over the last 25 years is it's never as bad as you thought. Yep. <laughs> and it's never as easy as you thought either. Like <laughs> So Both it is... It is it's never everything that you feared is not going to happen, <laughs> but at the same time, um, it's not as easy as you think it's going to. So understand, there is an equilibrium. There is like a path, and you can become financially free through turnkey rentals. We 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 do believe in that. Um, I believe in it so much that I'm now sponsoring new groups, even because you know for a while, I mean, I had a ton of people that wanted to loan me money, and a lot of people wanted to do that. Um, and people kind of felt like, to a certain degree, that prices on housing was overpriced, right? Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. we're going back into this market where we can actually give better than 1% returns. And I'm excited about it. I actually think our company is going to be able to do super, super well um, in the next two years because we're positioned in probably one of the perfect markets yep. um, in, in the country to be able to make it happen. I mean, I'm seeing turnkeys, right, Jared? A lot of the turnkeys that we see that get sent to me from other providers, mm-hmm. I mean, they're wanting $275,000 for a $1,700 a yeah. month rent. Yeah. I don't know how that makes sense to anybody, but it certainly doesn't not make yeah. sense to me, mm-hmm. um, especially with interest rates where they are today. So. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I do think that they're, I think focusing on a certain price range as well, different price ranges, um, kind of, uh, I think are going to be shifting mm-hmm. about with, you know, in the affordability, um, process, but focusing on the fundamentals is what we are doing. Yeah. Um, and that's what we recommend everybody else. So where is it at now? Market's shifting a little bit. Absolutely. Um, you know, what do we see over the next? And, and again, I don't feel like it's shifting as in prices are diving because they're mm-hmm. really not. It's mm-hmm. just more inventory is being put on the market and that distressed property, mm-hmm. that distressed property is not going to sell. Right. <laughs> so if you have a distressed property and you're trying to sell it now, you should have sold a year ago. You lost your opportunity. I'm just going to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're out there right now thinking, you know, like I need to sell this property 
and I'm going to get retail price for distressed property, it's not happening anymore. Mm-hmm. Those days are over. Those days are long gone. And even if, honestly, even if you have a lived-in property, dated, it hasn't been new, you know, carpets are from the 80s and light fixtures are from the 80s and the countertops and the cabinets are from the 60s and 70s and 80s, mm-hmm. like you're not going to get retail. It's not It's not there, folks. No. Um, so just, just know that that's the case. And the same way for rentals. I, I we we had we did have an episode about this a couple episodes ago mm-hmm. about why is my house not renting? It just so happens that every one of those houses that were for rent for a while ago are all rented now. Mm-hmm. They rented eventually. People eventually come to grips with reality and they eventually lower the price yeah. um, and get what that market says that that you should get for that property for rent or for sale. So, but if you're in one of those two bottom ends, be very careful. Um, you know, you you really do want that shiny new look. Yeah. Um, those houses are still selling as long as they're priced right. You cannot continue to go way over what all the mm-hmm. other comps say and think mm-hmm. that you're going to get the prices because it's not happening anymore. Yep. There may be some specific markets. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Real estate's become very, very localized. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we were talking. We had a guy from Putagora, Florida. I mean, prices have literally doubled in the, in, in two three years. Like wow. literally doubled, and so they've gone from two three hundred thousand to five six hundred thousand dollars. A massive. Um, and and there's no there's no turning back right now in that area because mm-hmm. so many people are moving from New Jersey or New mm-hmm. York or mm-hmm. Minnesota or Wisconsin to, to to Florida. So do know that real estate is very very localized, um, and you want to make sure that you've got your fundamentals down. Know yeah. that know that you've got good people that you can trust. This is also a good time to make sure you check your network. Um, you know, there's some people that my lending company, I've been telling Adam, like, I don't think I want to be as aggressive with a couple certain lenders. I don't quite trust them maybe to the degree I might trust other people. And I want to make sure that I'm kind of keeping things a little bit tighter, um, you know, during times like this when houses may sit for a long time. They may yeah. sit for a little longer on the market. So anything else you want to use to, to, to wrap up, Jared? I, I think we pretty much about covered you know what I wanted to say, but what is going on in real estate? No, I, I think uh, the the uh, for a while uh, you mentioned it uh, for us, our, our price point, especially with our turnkey product, has always been geared toward the investor cash flowing and it being a good investment. And then recently, some of those deals did not make sense. You know, you weren't going to buy a house for two hundred thousand dollars, and it, the rent was going to be thirteen fifty in Gary. That just numbers don't make sense. Didn't make sense for the investor. And it didn't make sense for us to sell it at turnkey prices. We had to sell. I mean, so in that case, it, it didn't really work well for the investor. And today, we're finding. But really, it worked for a retail buyer. Oh, worked for them wonderful. because they were getting a three percent mortgage. It's what they wanted. So yep. it, it doesn't. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it really, it really was a win-win for mm-hmm. everybody. Mm-hmm. Other than it wasn't a win-win for our investors because we couldn't sure. offer as many product properties as we're going to be able to offer here. Well, today, uh, what we're finding, and, and this is going to take to take time. I mean, for us, we talk all the time about the cycle and how long it takes for us to get a property to the investor. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, today, again, we are with our acquisitions team. We are we are daily talking about we do not need to reach. We do not need to. Uh, we don't. We don't have to pay their price. We just don't have to. Uh, we can be uh, selective. We can be firm on our price. And what we have found is uh, that they've come to us in many many situations. As far as a seller, the distressed owner, uh, they have come to us when we found our price is where we need to be. Um, as opposed to uh, like you said three months ago when they were getting what they wanted or more. Uh, now we've been firm on that. And, and that just translates more opportunity to you guys. And again, by us paying lower, that we believe we can get that right where it needs to be for you to make sense for your numbers at the end. And re, and also the opportunity, again, for Active Turnkey to be able to make Absolutely. it work for, new for everybody. So, you know, we believe if we can get people in 80, 85 percent of mm-hmm. after repaired value with purchase plus repairs yeah. on their own end, like it's a good deal for somebody to only be in a property, maybe six, eight, ten grand. Yeah. Um, it takes a little longer and it's a little bit more work. Don't get me wrong. Yep. And it's a little more painful to the investor. There's mm-hmm. things that can come up. And with the active turnkey process, there are two big risks that yep. I always want to talk about. The yep. first risk being when you go to refinance a cash house that you own free and clear, banks don't necessarily like to give you what that top appraisal number is. Now, mm-hmm. I will tell you, the last couple of years, we've had great luck, but I still yep. want to warn you. Yep. Historically, it is a little bit harder to get yes. that appraisal to come mm-hmm. in 
um, at full retail. Like mm-hmm. if you were to purchase that same property, it would appraise, yep. but as a cash out refi. So I, I always want to regurgitate that. I want to say it over and over and over again because yeah. it is a risk. It, it's something that could happen. And then the other thing is, is if you buy a property and it's active turnkey, you are buying it as is. Mm-hmm. Like you get a scope, you get what we think is going to be the prop, what, what we would have done originally. Mm-hmm. But just mm-hmm. like if we get into the middle of a project and we open up a wall mm-hmm. and there's termites, we got to take care of it. Yep. Just like if there's an issue with plumbing that we didn't see, we got to take care of it. Just like if there's mm-hmm. a problem with a roof or a problem with the HVAC mm-hmm. or a water heater or whatever it is, you name the list. I mean, it, it's it's an endless list. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, you know, those are two big risks that you've got to be willing to take on. But I believe it always has been and always will be a better deal in the long run if you'll take the risk. If you're willing to take the risk, willing to have a little bit more time and effort, and maybe a little bit of aggravation, a little bit more, um, mm-hmm. you know, headache. You will get a better deal in the long haul, and in the long haul, that's what we're here for. We are really trying to help the investor build their rental portfolios mm. and be successful for the long haul. It would almost be as if it's the best way. It is the best rentals. way to buy rentals, Jared. That is our tagline. <laughs> I will. Seamless. I just want to let you guys know if you guys liked this, please tell your friends <laughs> about us at Active Turnkey. Um, I'm not sure. Do we have ActiveTurnkey.com? I, I think we, I know I own the, the URL. I'm not sure if it goes to anything or not. You got to make sure now. Um, I know it does. I just don't know where it goes. <laughs> but you can go to buyolsongroup.com. That's B U Y um, O L S O N mm-hmm. group.com. You can get on Jared's list if you're interested mm-hmm. in um, purchasing turnkey rentals. Um, you can also check us out at that website. You can also email Jared at Jared at buyolsongroup.com. But if you, this has brought new value, please. Give us a like, a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Right, um, I, I think this is going to go out a little bit too late for anybody that, that wants to come to the free-for-all event. But we do have a free-for-all event every year, uh, once a year for all of our network. Um, next year's event is going to be at the beginning of September in 2023. We're going to do it earlier uh, next year. Um, so if you want to come to that event and come see us, we'd love to have you. And also I'm doing free calls every single month. The next call will be uh, the second week in October. So the second Saturday of October. I don't think I have a date in my mind right now, um, but it, it is the second Saturday in October. Um, and we're going to be talking about negotiations and we're talking about marketing and talking about data. Um, and I'm excited about that that call. Goodsuccess.com. You can find out more information about that. Awesome. Again, if you're looking to build a portfolio or you're just getting, getting, getting started with that, then you can reach out to me or go to our website. We'd be happy to help you. And Active Turnkey, the best way to buy rentals. See you guys. Olson Group Network makes no warranty, guarantee, or representation as to the accuracy or sufficiency of the information featured in this podcast. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only, and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. This podcast should not be considered professional advice. Unless specifically stated otherwise, Olson Group Network does not endorse, approve, recommend, or certify any information, product, process, service, or organization presented or mentioned in this podcast, and information from this podcast should not be referenced in any way to imply such approval or endorsement. Any third-party materials or content of any third-party site referenced in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the opinions, standards, or policies of Olson Group Network. Olson Group Network assumes no responsibility or liability for the accuracy or completeness of the content contained in third-party materials or on third-party sites referenced in this podcast or the compliance with the applicable laws of such materials and or links referenced herein.